Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Professor Mark Martin from the University of <laughs> here today to talk about my work with an ancient language that was nearly lost to the sands of time. This language is indeed quite ancient, as it was first spoken only in the early 1980s. If it's all right with you, <laughs> I'd like to share some of the rich poetry of this nearly forgotten language. When I was a little kid, I knew that I was a drummer. I drummed on everything. My school desk was a drum, my kitchen table was a drum. Basically, anything I could touch was a drum. So it wasn't long until I started getting into trouble for all the noise and had to find a new outlet for my rhythmic habit. <laughs> and that's why I started beatboxing. I love beatboxing because I can create music whenever and wherever I want. I don't need any expensive tools or technology. It's free. No one can take it away from me. And the worst thing that could possibly happen is getting a sore throat. And even that... <laughs> Even that won't stop me for very long. Basically, any obstacle that comes between me and the music I want to hear is eventually overcome. But most importantly, it's just really fun. So what is a beatbox anyway? <laughs> Searching for etymology of beatbox. <laughs> The term beatboxing originates from the late 70s and 80s as a name given to the first synthetic drum machines because it was a box that made beats. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were prohibitively expensive. During that time in New York City, Harlem, a young man known as Doug E. Fresh began imitating those sounds with his voice. Yes, it's true, he did in fact do that. He began imitating those sounds with his voice and went on to become one of the most iconic figures of hip-hop culture and sparked an entirely new art form. Beatboxing, beatboxing, beatboxing. But making sounds with your mouth is nothing new. When I was a little kid, me and my friends did it all the time. Spaceships, lightsabers, laser guns, machine guns, basically, Lots of guns. <laughs> it, it was normal. We all made sounds when we played with our toys, and I'm sure you did too. And then you grow up, 
and suddenly it's no longer socially acceptable to make strange noises. <laughs> Adults come up to me after a show and say, amazing, fantastic, that was incredible, but that's a talent I just don't have. But they're wrong. We all have incredible libraries of sounds buried deep within our memories. All we have to do is remember them. Okay, I can see the look on some of your faces, so let, let me prove it to you, okay? <clears throat> What's the sound of a cat? What's the sound of the wind? Very good. Now, what's the sound of a Harley Davidson motorcycle gunning down the highway? Yeah. It's my dad, by the way. All right, this one's a little tricky. Um, what's the sound of Broncos fans celebrating a Super Bowl victory? All right, that was, that was good practice. Don't forget to uh, cheer like that when I finish my talk. <clears throat> it's fun, though. We, we all have these incredible libraries of sounds that's flexible, emotional, and expressive, and forms the building blocks of our language. So why is it that we look down on kids for coining new slang while we celebrate people like Shakespeare for inventing all kinds of words, even though a lot of them are quite inappropriate? <laughs> it made me wonder, what if instead of telling noisy kids to be quiet, we could harness their innate curiosity and passion for creating new sounds to help them overcome the challenges they face in everyday life? <laughs> this is my mom, Lisa. She was, that's right, you cheer for Lisa. She was a special education teacher for over 20 years, and I'll never forget, one day she came home and she shared with me some of the speech therapy techniques she uses in the classroom. I was like, wow, that sounds terrible. Imagine, you're a young kid in her class and you're struggling with uh, the K sound, which is pretty common. So she'd hold up a car and say, all right, Jimmy, say key, T. Close, okay, um, it's a little further back in the throat, okay, can you say, key, T. Closer, okay, um, it's, it, it's like a scraping sound, it's like a, like a key, T. Here's this kid, failing over and over and over, trying again and again and again, hoping that after thousands and thousands and thousands of attempts, he might just eventually get it. That's tough. It's clear that many traditional speech therapy techniques are mind-numbing, soul-crushing, and boring. <laughs> Fast forward, <laughs> New York City 2008. I finally met people that spoke my language, my people, noisy people, beatboxers. Beatboxing in the subway, I met my mentor, Kid Lucky, who introduced me to his style called beat rhyming. Beat rhyming emphasizes the percussive nature of words to create a platform for lyrical content. For example, <clears throat> break it down, break it down, break it down to the sound. I was inspired by the New York City beatboxing community, so I created my own major at New York University exploring the relationship between beatbox and language. One of the first challenges I faced was how do you write down all of these crazy sounds? How do you write down <laughs> So, <laughs> so I took a course in phonetics, the study of sounds used in speech. One of the first things I encountered was the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, which linguists and speech language pathologists use to accurately describe the sounds used in language. Now, make sure to take notes because you will be quizzed at the end of this talk. <clears throat> yes. So the first thing that really stood out to me were the plosives, which as the name implies are explosive and mirror the percussive sounds of a drum set. So this includes P, T, and K. The second thing that stood out to me were the fricatives. Think friction that has all the cool, breathy, swishy, whoosh, sounds like F, S, Esh, and H. The IPA was my roadmap to the human 
voice, a tool, a path that could elevate beatboxing from a glorified party trick to a real tool that could change people's lives. You guys want to learn a beatbox hack? All right, okay. <clears throat> drum roll, drum roll, okay. All right, all you need in order to become an instant beatboxer is boots and cats. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. All you have to do is over-articulate the plosives and the fricatives, boots and cats. Remove the voice by whispering, boots and cats. Remove the breath altogether, leaving only the consonants, Repeat it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and voila! Boots and cats becomes boots and cats becomes boots and cats. Now join in with me, like boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and cats. Wait a second. One more. Key. T. Key. Ooh. That kind of sounds like my mom's speech therapy technique, right? It made me wonder, was there a way to bridge the world of language and music with beatboxing that could make speech therapy more fun? So I teamed up with two-time world beatbox champion and beat rhyme master Kayla Milady. We synthesized our experiences to create a curriculum, which we brought to the amazing educational nonprofit Beat Global in New York City. We thought that our curriculum could have the biggest impact with the challenges of articulation and phonemic awareness, the ability to hear, identify, and manipulate individual sounds. Our philosophy is that beatboxing is like sneaking vegetables into a fruit smoothie. <laughs> Within the fun and delicious world of music lie real opportunities for growth. Rather than focusing on our students' disabilities, we focus on their abilities, what they can do, and we build off of that. Rather than focusing on getting it right, we focus on having fun. We believe that if you're having fun, you'll keep trying. So, after a few big breakthroughs in the, in the classroom, we teamed up with Beat Global, NYU, and some of New York City's top speech language pathologists to conduct a study of our curriculum. We tracked six students twice a week for 10 weeks and found that on average, our students improved articulation by 19% and phonemic awareness by 12%. But most importantly, the data showed that our students actually wanted to be there. Now, we know that beatboxing isn't a cure-all for every speech therapy challenge out there, but it can be harnessed as a powerful tool for speech language therapists as well as educators of all walks of life. Think about it. You're six years old and you have a choice. Would you rather go to speech therapy or be in a sick band? That's what I thought. Now, Speaking of being in a sick band, let's play my favorite beatboxing game, The Human Orchestra. <clears throat> All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever Denver Beatbox Orchestra. Now, before we begin, a quick sound check. Now, some students struggle with the T sound, so we give them the hi-hat drum to play. So. What I'm going to do is do a simple pattern and you repeat after me, all right? Like this. Very good. Now, other students struggle with the P sound. For example, in Arabic, they don't use the letter P at all. So we would give you the bass drum to play, okay? And it sounds like this. I'll do the pattern and you repeat after me. Very good. Now, other students struggle with the K sound, like we heard early in the example with key. So we would give you the snare drum. Now, a little trick that can help you with your snare drums is to think about snapping your fingers. Does everyone here know how to snap your fingers? Sounds like rain, very nice. So the way you snap is you build up the pressure between your thumb and your middle finger, and when you release the pressure, that's what makes the popping sound. If you grind your fingers, nothing comes out. And it works the same way for your snare drums, okay? Once again, I'm going to do a pattern, and you repeat after me. Very nice, okay. Now we're going to divide you into three 
sections. A quick uh, conducting note. If we're making a whole bunch of noise in hullabaloo and I go like this, you stop, okay? <laughs> just, just a little forewarning, okay? So our first group over here on the left side, you will be the bass drums. Bass drums, make some noise! Oh, come on, bass drums, you can make some noise! Very good, okay. Now, on my right side, we have the snare drums. Snare drums, make some noise! Very good. Now, last but not least, in the middle, we have the hi-hats. Hi-hats, make some noise! Very good. Now, a quick word or reminder that I need everyone to play your parts, because if you don't, my TED Talk won't work. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we're going to begin in the middle section with the hi-hats. I'm going to give you a pattern. You will repeat that pattern over and over and over. We'll add in the bass drums and the snares. I'll come and jam with you, human orchestra. All right, got it? All right, here we go. So hi-hats, your pattern sounds like this. Very good, keep it going. All right, now bass, drums, your power sounds like this. Nice and loud. All right, snare drums, you ready? Sounds like this. Officially beatboxers. Which means now there's no excuse when one of you comes up to me and says, but I can't beatbox, because you just did. <laughs> hey, hi-hats, you feel a little bit more confident making a T sound, huh? Yeah. You know, sometimes solving a problem means looking at the same old thing in a new way. Beatboxing has an amazing legacy of resourcefulness, creativity, and fun. And speech therapy is just the tip of the beatbox iceberg. Imagine the changes we would see in the world if we were all more comfortable using our voice. The first step to speaking up is making a sound. Thank you.